Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the moment of inertia of compound structures. Well, compound structures are typically made up of the simple structure we saw in the previous video. So it turns out that when we want to find the moment of inertia of a compound structure, we simply do a algebraic addition. Now that's provided all of the pieces have a common point of rotation. That's really important. So we can simply add the moment of inertia of each piece and that will then give us the total. So let's take a look at three typical examples. Here we have four point masses all attached to the same point of rotation, let's say with a light rod or a light string, so we don't have to worry about the mass of the rod or the string. The radius is the distance from the point of rotation to each of the masses, which is r. Notice that three of the masses have mass m, one of them has mass 2m, so we simply add the four individual moment of inertias, which by definition is mr squared. Of course, the mass of this one is 2m, so that's why it's 2mr squared, so for a total of 5mr squared. We simply add them together, so it's very simple and straightforward. What if we have two thin boards? attached to the same common point of rotation, the point of rotation at the center of each of the two boards. Notice that the moment of inertia of a board of length L and mass M uh, rotated about the center of mass of the board is 1 12th ML squared. Since there's two of them, we add them together and we get 1 6th ML squared. We could also think of it as four separate boards all rotating about the same point of rotation, but then you would have the end of the board as the point of rotation. In that case, there's four of them, and therefore it would be one-third the mass of each piece times the length squared. Now the mass of each piece would be half the mass of a total board, and the length of each piece would be half the length of the total board. And so therefore we have one-third the mass m over 2 times the length l over 2 quantity squared. And of course you get the exact same answer. You better get the exact same answer. And so again, it's simply a summation of how you want to divide the compound structure into individual pieces. So here we have a wagon wheel, and so we can think of it as having eight spokes and a rim. The mass of the rim is big M, the mass of each of the spokes is small m, the length of each spoke is the radius of the wheel, or r. So the total moment of inertia is eight times the moment of inertia of each spoke plus the moment of inertia of the rim. Each spoke is like a thin rod rotating about the end, and so you use one-third mr squared, r because the length of the rod is, is the same as the radius of the wheel. And so then we add to that the moment of, of inertia of the rim and of course all the masses at the distance are away from the point of rotation so it's mr squared, in this case big mr squared. And so when you add them together you get the total moment of inertia. So compound structures, not a problem. You simply identify each individual piece and then add them all together provided of course they all have the same common point of rotation. And that is how it's done.